and uh, it don't have to have, be anything spectacular or whatever. Let, we can just spend some time together since you're back. Now, let me see if I can. Um, I have some video too that I'd like to share. What do you to upgrade to? I just upgraded systems. I don't know what to upgrade to. Yeah. I'm still a big sure. Okay. Um, let me go. And you know, I'm 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 not. I have not traveled anywhere near what you have in your life, right? But I remember coming back from India the one time that I went in 2011 on that plane ride back I physically just felt ill I felt ill because I was so tired because you can't rest you might even fall asleep on a plane but it's not good rest you know you might fall asleep on a bus but it's not good rest you know and like go, going and jumping on a plane and jumping on another plane and then get into a taxi and then doing something else. I mean, that that's just brutal on your body. Yeah, and um, you know, and, and on top of that, it was extremely complicated. It, it sounded like y'all were getting rerouted around to various airports I never even heard of. Yeah, well, the way I, I bought the ticket was to save money, and I bought two one-way tickets and <clears throat> saved about a thousand dollars each. You know, um, so going there was a little bit more complicated, and there was there were booked as three individual tickets to India, so the connection times were pretty tight. So the thought, the way it was going to work is that if you check bags, you have to go get the bags go to the counter or check them to the next flight. In an hour and a half, you don't have enough time. And so we didn't check bags. We just, you know, carry on because of these tight connections. And and so we had, a, we anyway, so it was LA to Helsinki, Finland. It was a, uh, We had plenty of time there, had an hour and a half. And then Helsinki to Doha, into the Middle East and the Persian Gulf. And, and then Doha, we got the Hyderabad, that was to India. And then once we got to India, we had like a long layover and we went into Bangalore, Bangalore, Bangalore. Bangalore. So Bangalore, um, then we drove to Belakupi, which it's like 150 miles. Took us eight hours, you know? You got a cab or what? Well, so Karzan sent us a driver from the camp, you know. So he picked us up, met us there. Maria was supposed to go with us, I mean, be there, but she, you know, she missed out a day. So she arrived the second day, along with uh, some, um, the, the checks, the checks, the, you know, two checks, and, the, and then the German, Max, were there. So um, they drove, and they had similar problems too. You know, they had a lot of baggage, so they had two cars. One car had car issues, so it took them a long, long time to get to uh, Belakupi. So they had an equal long journey. They had to stop several times. So anyhow, so we all got there, and then the, the, the Spaniards, some uh, couple showed up, and they got there without incident. You know, but uh, coming back. Um, the way it worked out, you know, we, we stayed, because we, we didn't have any plans after the 28th, which is Sunday. Our flight out was Saturday from Mumbai. So we had a whole week in which we were flexible. And it turned out that three days after the, the, the ceremony, they were going to open the, um, the stupa and reveal what was in it. And so we, so we said, well, you know, Wednesday, so well, we don't really have any plans. I mean, we're just gonna. So, so when you back. say when you say open the stupa, and, and and I'm I'm Facebooking live in this, so we're talking about Rinpoche's passing, his cremation ceremony that you went to in India, uh, and and are you talking about opening the cremation stupa? Yeah, yes. Uh, you know, when they did this whole ceremony, they. Um, you know, they lit the fire, and he was in the, in the prayers and in the ceremonies. Uh, um, 
he, he was uh, cremated, I mean, essentially, the, the Tennessee. I mean, if you looked at some of the, uh, I'll post up some links um, in a day or so, so you can see a better camera view of the whole process. But yeah, they, they basically, the cremation that we could see was several hours, and it was pretty intense. And then after the ceremony ends, uh, they go around and they seal the four sides on the bottom. Uh, they seal it when they put some kind of a sealant around the edges. And then the main door where you could see him, they seal that and on the top they put something on top. So uh, they let him, uh, they let the, the, the process continue and stew or cook or whatever you're going to call it. But you know, you could still, even though there was a lid on top, you could still see smoke escaping from the top. So it, it was still, um, he was still on fire or the body was still on fire for, for many days. <laughs> Oh and my, on Wednesday, wow. um, they came in a ceremony, the, the big, the, the High Lama there at Nam Thuling, uh, Monastery showed up and did a little bit of a ceremony. I have that all on video. Um, and Karzan, you know, asked me and allowed me to shoot video of a lot of stuff. And I was privileged to go, Nam Thuling Monastery was closed to the public. And, and so Rinpoche was about a mile from the... Nandrling um, Monastery, and he was in a refrigerated box uh, to preserve his body until the ceremony. And the night before, you know, uh, monks came in. I didn't know this, and I'm glad I didn't know it. And I wasn't supposed to know this, so it's okay. They came in, and they, un they, they dressed him, and they put him in a position of where he's meditating. So he's in a fixed position, and in a kind of a makeshift chair. Um, and overnight they pl place him in a, um, a decorated box that's measured to his height and his body so this box is kind of square a little rectangle maybe and um, that's where they that's where we begin you know on the cremation day and so these monks come in and they take him pick him up and then they take him outside uh, onto a truck and this procession then leaves to the monastery. And since it was close to the public, no one else could go. And uh, I was told I could go huh, to record it. And so I took advantage of it. I drove with uh, Karzanla. Um, and we went, led the procession. As soon as we got to the gates, uh, I got out of the car. And, and then the truck with Rinpoche's um, body. Um, is coming into this um, monastery, and this monastery uh, entrance uh, little plaza is huge, huge entrance, and there was like 600 monks sitting there waiting for him. Um, and so, I mean, I have some video I could play if you want to look at some of that. Sure. Um, share, let me share some screen. Um, oh, um, I have to make you the uh, co-host. Okay, so... It, it was really, it was really incredible that um, hmm. th this whole process. And then you know they go and then and these monks chant these prayers, and then he goes back through the little town and back to the home, and that's where the the, the whole uh, ceremony begins. But I'll, I'll give you a little uh, idea of um, so I can I can do this now. Yeah, and but but when you leave, make me the host again. Okay, so this is, you can see the screen? It's really dark. There so we this go. is the room where he was at. And this is the morning of the cremation. And I'm recording this on, and he's being taken out of the room. And this is stuff that hasn't been seen, so it's very sensitive. Okay. Um, I mean, I was just going to be seen now, but... It's okay to put on the... Yeah, so I'm going to go... Oh, let me go back to a little bit. So let me just go back to some of this. Um, oops. There's tier 2 new percent. Here he is being hoisted up.
this is a teacher. This was his teacher when he was a kid. Oh, really? Islam was incredible. Yeah. He was his teacher. That's Eckerd right there. This guy in the blue mask is incredible. He was really uh, instrumental in the whole process. Was he like a ceremony master or something? He was a, a special monk who managed a lot of the uh, moving parts. Yeah. I, I don't even know his name, but he was, he was really, really nice. Um, I know this guy right here on the right is Jitney. He was in Dallas for many years. He spoke perfect English. Really? So, well, it's Dallas. Like, I've been to Mount Ware in Dallas. It's all actually Fort Worth. So, I said, okay, that's, that's not Dallas. Well, everybody knows where Dallas is. So, did, anyway, here we go. We're off uh, to... Um, did you ever ask there. what the uh, significance of the parasol was? The umbrella? I didn't ask. Uh, it's just, it's just, it's just, you know, when you give them cover, it it's, gives them the importance of right. who they are. Yeah, it's just a recognition of status to uh, show, like, the importance of the ceremony, to give it shade. So here we get into uh, the monastery. Yes, I, I guess it just gives them, you know, uh, like a tower. So I, I, I should ask. So we're arriving to the monastery here. And, um, you know, I'm in the front seat. What does she have out the window there? Incense, and she's praying. She's doing mantras, and there I am, trying to get out of the car. <laughs> it was pretty fast. I just want to show you how fast this was. There's Jitney. And then here comes a procession. This is family members. This is his sister and other family members. And then this is um, obviously what this is, you know. And that's facing four. That's, These are his monks from Manpat. Yeah, I recognize some of them. They're they're grown men now. Absolutely, they're sweethearts. So I'm allowed to go in. No one really else is. And uh, do you hear audio? I don't know. You don't. It's interesting. It's kind of jumpy, so I don't know how good the audio would be. It's it, it's lagging a little bit on my my end. Can't hear it. Can't hear it. No. Oh, that's too bad. This so really, really when you shared your screen, did you click the box that said share audio? Oh, let me see. Go back to doing this again. Yeah. It doesn't give me a oh, oh, mute. Wow. Who are all those monks? They're from the monastery? They're from the monastery. They're from Namlin. Whoa, that is a lot of monks. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't say to do audio. Whenever you share... I can't hear it either. When you share... Oh, you can't hear it either? Um, which is odd so I remember we went to go hear the Dalai Lama in Deer Park where Buddha taught his first sermon delivered his very first sermon and we were with Rinpoche and we went to Deer Park and it was beautiful and the Dalai Lama was there he just happened to be there at that time and he was delivering a sermon on our very my favorite text, which is the Bodhicharya Tara, Shanti Diva. So he was teaching on Shanti Diva, the way the Bodhisattva, the Dalai Lama was. And I will never forget walking up on that scene and seeing thousands of monks from all the traditions in the world. And it looked like flowers of every kind of flower you can imagine because their robes were different colored. And it's like you see those monks and how they're all dressed uh, in that those beautiful robes. It was like that where you saw Zen monks, you saw uh, Theravadan monks, you saw Tibetan monks. Just all these robes from all over the world. It was just so breathtaking. The colors. 
Look at all these monks. I wish you could hear. Let me see if it's the other... And they're chanting right now? Yeah, they're chanting. Hold on. Let me see if this has anything any better. I can hear this. I can't even hear that. Jose is watching us. What's up, Jose? If you go to uh, the Woke House Facebook page, there's a link to this Zoom. There's also there's also there's also on the YTDR page. If you go to ytdr.org and you click meditation, there's a link to this Zoom. If you want to pop on, Jose. Yes, now we can hear it. We can hear it, but it sounds robotic and this and it's frozen. No, it's the screen is frozen, and the voices sound a little bit robotic. Right, let me see if I can share something else. I don't think it's my internet, but it could be. One second. I don't know how this thing came up. That's all. Quit. Jesus. Anyway, let me see if I can get this going. I thought you could see it. But you can't, so. Anyway, so, uh, you know, as we were talking about, it's, it was a spectacular event, and, and um, there's a lot of moving parts to it, and Karzan was unbelievable. She was just unbelievable. She organized everything in such finesse and such grace, you know, and everybody you know, was very supportive, but she ran everything, you know, from the monks to um, the, the food, the feeding, the, the transportation. She was um, unbelievable. And and so, you know, and, it, and it's very expensive um, to, to do this because it costs about $100 to $150 a day for every ceremony. Every day there's a ceremony. Oh, come on. Every day there's a ceremony, um, and you got to pay the monks, and you got to. You know, it's not just a payment, but there is a um, a sense of. Um, it's probably donation based, you know. Yeah, who's who's donating? That's the question. Who? Who's I mean, who's donating? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's. I mean, my point is that it's expensive, and we assume that someone else is doing it. So I mean, I get that, but. Well, the thing is, is that every day it's like two hundred dollars is is is, um, is is being spent um, on on just basics. Um, um, let me see if I can get this back to because I mean I think this is really spectacular. Um, so there's there's a lot of expense that goes into. You see the the YouTube screen? Yeah, but as as a Westerner, how would you know that? And how would you know how much to give? I know, and that's my mission to do that this week. Is is there any better video?
Can you hear any better? Yeah, it, that's a better quality there. It's a lower resolution, so. Yeah. And then we leave, and we're going back to uh, the house. This is a little town that's right there outside of Nandrani. It's not really a town, it's just a set of businesses and restaurants. This is very early on Sunday morning. There's lots of dogs everywhere. <laughs> and there's a man right there giving his um, respect, paying his respect. So this is the road back. This is the road to there. Oops, let me see if I can. Who is that, that guy wearing the Nagpa robe? He looks... That, that is Vladimir uh, Zuzak. He's a, the, the Czech... Um, the lead guy in the Czech uh, Sangha. Oh, really? They are very um, big uh, supporters of uh, Karzan and the family, and they're working on getting them a residency and a Czech residency since the Americans... Um, Effort didn't go so well. Maybe, maybe me, you, and Michelle, and some other people can discuss that. So they're very supportive, and they have, they're going to build a stupa. There's Maria. This is uh, another guru. This is everybody going to... And, that's, and the one in the blue is Deepak. Um, she has a Facebook page that she's honoring to Grimpache every day with stories about him. And really? Uh, you should friend her. Um, so this is, um, um, this is Tash, this is Rikpa. I think this is Rikpa. Yeah. All crying. So this is what you don't see. <laughs> Maybe you pick it up here in the Zoom, but this is the procession here. The Spaniards are on the left there with the, the couple. These are just, I don't know, these are invitees. I think there's some. So they walk him around the stupa once, and there's this uh, the son who's impressive. He's incredible. So this is where they take him and put him up on the stupa. There's our hero right there, playing incredible. Check me.
That's a whole that's a whole different world from how we do death, isn't it? Yes. And what is that stupid made of? It's like clay? No, it's concrete. It's a cinder block and there's many layers to it. It's just an, it's an, it's a solid structure. I mean, this thing would survive probably a tornado. Really? But they're going to knock it down now. And they're going to build the stupa where his remains will be going into. And from what I understand, um, you know, from what I understand, that it, the, the way the remains, and I'm going to stop sharing, you know, this is pretty much. Okay. You can see this, you know, um, and so the way that I understand it, the eyes and the tongue and the heart came together and that's how they were found. And that's a very auspicious, um, sign to say that he was pretty much had pretty much almost reached enlightenment or he was pretty close to it. It was, it, it gives you an idea of how, how, um, how powerful in the sense he was spiritually. And that the word will eventually get around to people and they will come to see him and pay respects to a Lama that on this uh, great scale. So he, he, he was amazing, you know, in every regard and, and, and everything and all the stories that we hear about him are really, really incredible. And, and you don't really know because on a personal level, you have things that have happened with you and him and things in your life. But when you hear all of the other, other stories too, who are similar, it's not an accident, you know, he, he was powerful in his belief and he's powerful in his prayer. And he, um, dedicated a lot to the Tara. And so, um, you know, that is a very powerful, uh, practice and he was very powerful in his practice. And, and so, you know, Vinay said almost the same thing to me one time. He said, you know, we meet Rinpoche and we only have our own limited view of our time with him. But when you start meeting all his other students and all the pieces start falling into place, you step back and go, oh, wait a minute. Who is this guy? Like, wait a minute. This is, this is something, this is something re really important, you know? Yeah, exactly. And so... He lives on, you know, and like I said, there's no past tense for me in him. And and my my belief is I see him. I mean, there was physical distance to where he was in India and I was here physically. But now that physical distance is, is no longer and he's everywhere. If you listen for him, you'll hear him. If you look for him, you'll see him. And um, so he exists. It's in present tense. And... The one that's really amazing in my book um, is both um, uh, Karzanla and uh, Tirtan Rinpoche. He goes by, you know, Tirtan Rinpoche and Walt Deserve. He is a very um, beautiful young man and he is very, um, takes his role serious, understands his role, and he has this profound wisdom for a nine year old at times. Yeah, he's a nine year old. But then at times, um, at times he's a nine-year-old. Uh, but for the most part, he is very focused on, you know, who, who, his mission and what, he, what his responsibilities are. And he understands his responsibilities. And for a nine-year-old, that's impressive. And so um, he's going to pick up and continue his father's legacy. And he's going to create his own legacy. And he's a, he's a, he is someone to be um, acknowledged and recognized. Um, in the same light, if not in a higher light than his father. I believe personally, personally, that people will go see him, whereas Rinpoche went out to the world, people will go see his son, and rightfully so. And they're building a stupa in Czechoslovakia. They bought the land, they acquired the land, and they're gonna build one of the biggest stupas, you know, in Europe and in the world. So it's supposed to be bigger than Nepal's um, stupa. And I'm just thinking that um, that's a foundation called the Tirtun Foundation, and they have uh, we have to support that. And so what I'm coming back to is that 
we're going to join forces, YTDR and uh, the Tierton Foundations, which is the Czechs. They're, they're beautiful, wonderful people. Um, and, and they have a huge support uh, in Europe, Germany, Spain, uh, Czechoslovakia. They're very dedicated, the students. And we're going to have kind of a, a joint um, task to, to try to meet those goals. You know, the MANPAT, you have um, the Nepal, you have projects for the stupa. We have to build the stupa for his remains to go into. That's going to cost something. <laughs> Excuse me. So we have the stupa. <laughs> Where remains are going to be uh, left. They're going to destroy this stupa. They're going to knock it down and then rebuild it for uh, a permanent structure. For Rinpoche, it's different. It's going to have his artifacts, his bones, his ash from the ceremony. That's where it's going to be sealed. And uh, they have the big stupa. So all these require some commitment, and we're going to have to figure that out. One of the things that I do have. That the, uh, that the organizations and the Sanghas and the Gompas that have in Europe and, and is um, video of his teachings. I left them with the, the San Antonio teaching, the uh, one we did in 2012, and I played a little bit of that just to demonstrate. I just dropped it and part of his teachings and the room froze. Everybody froze and started listening I didn't, I just randomly just scrubbed to it. So look, this is what this teachings, you know, the kind of material that we have. And like I said, the whole world stopped to listen to his teachings and it was prophetic. It was, it was unbelievable, his message. It was about death. It was about, you know, moving on and uh, have compassion. <laughs> And everybody was in tears, you know, because, you know, he says, you know, do not cry. It was do not this. And, you know, when you're born, you can guarantee that you're going to have death. Also, it's guaranteed. You're not going to guarantee the lotto. And to have uh, compassion. <laughs> so his, his message was just spot on and uh, you know a couple of the students there said did you you know do that did you cue that i said no it was random it was random and the message like i said was just boom hit, you know hit everybody uh hard in the sense that um it was what we needed to hear so again that's just another example of how things you know move around him and you know, um, there's no coincidences and stuff like that. So it, it, it was, it, it, the trip was, you know, exhausting and you didn't know how exhausting it was until you get home and then it hits you, it catches up to you, you know? Yeah. But it was, uh, well worth it. Um, how did Ellie, how did Elizabeth like it? She loved it. I mean, um, you know, it's, as in any trip, when you don't know the unknowns, you know, you have a lot of thoughts in your head about what it could be, what it might be. You know, and um, maybe when you prepare for the worst, and then it's not so bad. It's like a surprise, a pleasant surprise. And I believe that was uh, what she found. The food was fantastic. You know, um, uh, I don't know how uh, Carzan has some cooks, um, uh, a couple that cooks. You know, the kitchen that the house that we were in isn't complete, so that's another project. Where they're cooking in the balcony in the, on the patio. And then the kitchen is used as a storage, so I'll share that as one of the projects to fundraise. But the food was fantastic. <laughs> and she fed the monks every day, morning, lunch, and dinner. She tried to feed us, <laughs> and she did. And there was always coffee, butter, butter coffee or butter tea, which is excellent. So there's constant, you know, in the offerings uh, to, the, to the ceremony. They come back and then we can eat those too. So, you know, there's, it's, uh, the food was fantastic. We didn't really eat out that much um, because we didn't need to. You know, we ate at the hotel breakfast and then we went to the house. And um, So the food that's offered can be eaten afterwards? 
Yes, of course. Oh, wow. It's blessed and stuff like that, so they expect you to eat it, you know? That's awesome. Yeah, so, you know, the cookies, candies, fruits, um, whatnot, and yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty good, but this is, every day for 49 days, you have these, um, these, the ceremonies, you have a morning session and an afternoon session every day, every day, every day. And they're doing it in Manpat, Nepal, and they're also now in Bella Kupi. So there's three places they're doing them. And they're asking for all of us to do the 100 syllable of mantras. We have to do 100,000 within the next couple of weeks, you know. And if you can count your mantras, and I don't know, we have to find a system to report them, but we have to hit 100,000, um, 100 day syllables, 100 syllable mantra. Um, which I hope to post up on the website. I need to catch up. Um, now that I'm kind of bouncing back on my feet, you know, and I feel a little bit better, you know, I got a lot of work to do to catch up and to, you know, follow up. And, and I think we should have, I'll call it a Zoom meeting to debrief. Maria just got back yesterday from a, a trip to, to Cuba to go see her, 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 her family, her father. And, and I'm sure she has just as exciting stuff to share and, and, um, you know, I haven't forgotten anybody. I have a long list of uh, things I have to do. It's just, um, you know, when you, I calculated it was 25,000 conservative miles. I more likely believe it was closer to 30,000 when we traveled. And um, so that <laughs> is not easy, you know, and especially the time of COVID and all these things. And, our return flight was a lot better. You know, it was only two flights, and it was 11 hours each, but it's still 11 hours each with, like, a four- or five-hour layover in London. So it was easier. Uh, but still, you know, 11-hour flight is an 11-hour flight, but, you know, times Man. two. Man. You know, we had to be at the airport at midnight um, Saturday, and our flight left at 4 a.m. Saturday morning. Jeez. And we flew uh, west, you know, pretty much for the most time. Um, well, we flew north, and then we flew over the North Pole and, and started flying and chasing the sunsets. So we had a spectacular sunset flying back. It was a little beautiful where, colors. Where it stays sunset for hours because you're going... Toward the west. Towards yeah. the west. Wow. So that lasted a long time until we landed, and it was already dark here, so... Um, chase the sunset coming home. And I did sleep a little bit, but not a whole lot. And so anyway, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, Karzan, like I said again, Karzan Law is amazing. Uh, Tirton Rinpoche is amazing. Um, Vladimir and his wife, Hannah, and Eckerd, and Judy, and Pedro and his wife, and uh, Max from Germany. He was awesome. Maria was awesome. So, I have a question that my wife asked me, and I didn't really know how to answer it. She said, so now is Rinpoche going to reincarnate, and how are they going to yes. find his his reincarnation yes. and all that? That's a task for the, hold on, that's a task for the, 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 the llamas. I don't know how that process begins, but they expect him to come back in two years. In two years. In two years. Well... And also, uh, Tirtan Rinpoche shared that when he is 30, his father, he said, will be 21. Oh, really? So he's nine. So there's a difference of two years there. Whoa. So, I mean, yeah, he had a lot of wisdom. And, you know, when we were kind of sad, he says, do not cry. You know, I am my father. I am now Rinpoche. Whoa. So they're... they're they have a they have a plan in place to to locate him. They have a way to locate him, and um, <laughs> my God. Um, and so that's the idea. You know, in two years, he'll be within two years he'll be born, and then so I don't know at what point he'll be recognized, but it could be a few years after that. So Tirton Repuche was recognized probably when he was five or six. Mm -hmm. So I think it'll be the same for Rinpoche. Wow! And he may come back with um, more more authority in a sense, but you know I think that it's easy to say is that he came in at this this level. Now he's probably going to go a little higher. His son is certainly um, a very powerful reincarnated llama. 
So that's the idea, you know. They, they have something in place, you know, to figure out how to find him. You know, the Pinner Ripochet's uh, successor has been found, you know. He's a little, he's a, he's a young, young kid, too. Really? So, yeah, he's been found. So all of these, this whole is, a, is an intricate process, which I don't quite understand enough to explain, other than I know that they have uh, something in place to find him. Yeah. And to bring him to... Um, to light yeah but but like anything you know there's there's a lot of protectiveness and there's there we have to guard the image of tin, tin, um, Turton Rinpoche um, because you know he's a kid and, and for one and you know there's a lot of madness out there sometimes so you know you won't see a lot of things behind the scenes of him at all we're not going to push him in, you know, his image too much. Um, and, and that's, and we have to respect, um, you know, Karzan Law's wishes. And that's what I think is best for the kid right now. Yeah, again, I say this respectfully, you know, and, and so, but everything moves on you know, with, with, uh, everything moves on. So we're, we're going to have to propose, um, come up with we have a plan not a plan we have an idea of projects how much is needed um the fundraising and again you know um every day every ceremony costs about 150 dollars per 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 location so um you know, you're talking about at least 350 well, more than that, 150 150 like 400 dollars 450 a day in in ceremonies if you count them all and um, so that's expensive, you know. And you have forty nine days of this, so you know, we have to we have to come up with with something in some way to fund the ceremonies. Then we have the kitchen project, and we have the super project, and we have the big super project, and then we have the maintenance, the monthly expenses of Manpat, and then there are special occasions where they need every year new robes, new shoes, and stuff like that. So, yeah. You know, this is a monumental, monumental task, you know, but it's well worth it. They're greatly appreciative of everything, and they're very grateful for everything. They, they acknowledge, you know, the support we give them, um, and they're very humble, and, um, and it kind of gives you the motivation to keep doing it, you know. So, you know, every little bit counts. Everything that comes from your heart matters. It goes to a good cause, and again... They, they acknowledge it and they respect it and they and they and they need it because they have really they only have us you know so whatever we can do. So would you recommend right now starting to um, direct people to the YTDR website to donate there? Absolutely, absolutely, and, and we have a, a way to funnel uh, directly funnel with minimum. Um, uh, cost so you know you could pretty much say 100 percent of your donation goes straight there straight to one of the projects and i'm going to have to update the website to de describe the projects you know the budget that's involved um any contribution that you can make to any of those is helpful and so right now the main thing is the ceremonies and uh the stupa <laughs> well there's everything's a priority you know so Oh, any 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 money that you donate will definitely one hundred percent goes to to what what is needed. You know, we don't have any costs incurred. You know, there's no we don't no one else no there's nobody being paid. There so you know like in some charities there's seventy percent, eighty percent, ninety percent. There are no administrative costs here. So feel free that in the costs that are incurred is maybe the wire or the funding or something like that, which is nominal minimal. Yeah. So that's all, you know. Was, I just can't emphasize enough how grateful they are, how appreciative they are. Yeah. Well, maybe in the short term, we can just start posting and directing people to the website, and maybe Michelle could get out an email, a mass email to all the students, directing them to the website to start donating and all that kind of stuff. Yes, and we'll have, we'll have a short list of, of what we need in, in the donations and why they, what we need them. Yeah. You know, I did video of the, of the kitchen, what situation. We're going to be a little bit more visual so people can see and have an idea. We're going to have a budget and try to have an idea of what, what we need to get to. So um, anyway, moving forward. And, and so um, I've got to go, Kylie. So, yes. Uh, I mean, we
we could definitely post up and get Maria on a meeting and debrief everybody and do a Zoom this way. Um, can you make me the host so I can finish out with the prayers? Let me see. Sure. <clears throat> How do you do the host? You, you just hit participants and you go to my my name and to the right of my name. You click to the right of my name and it should say make host. Gotcha. All right, Kyle. All right, buddy. Well, get some rest. I know you got to go to work, but. I'll update the website here in, uh, hopefully tomorrow and we'll go from there. Thank you, Kylie. I have to run. All right, brother. Have a wonderful day. Take care of yourself. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Well, all right. That was Jerry back from India. Our dear Lama. Lama Tuku Sori Detchen Rinpoche was cremated. And Rinpoche is what you call a Nagpa. He is um, a non-monastic monk. He has children. And one of his uh, sons is a reincarnation of a famous Tertron. A Tertron is somebody who uncovered uh, some Dharma. It's kind of a mystical thing. It's like maybe something uh, Buddha hid from our consciousness or something that a great, important being hid from our consciousness and a Tertran, uh discovers it out there in the, in the um, Alaya or you could say even like the... Um, Akasha Records, you can call it the Akasha Records, out there in the ether, and it 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 brings this Tertron brings it to light, takes it out of the universe, the teaching, and brings it to light. So it's a really mystical and uh, di a, a, a different kind of honor. It's kind of like being a prophet, I guess. In Christianity, it's like. You would say a prophet is hearing the voice of God and, and the mouthpiece of God, where Tertron is the mouthpiece of something that Buddha uh, intended for the world, or something a great lama or um, enlightened being or bodhisattva meant for the world. And the message wasn't meant for their time, it was meant for a future time. And a Tertron is somebody that brings... The message out of the past into the future um, it's a little complicated complicated but it's interesting very interesting tradition uh, so we're gonna go out with the closing prayers this Saturday meditation uh, you know it, it's kind of like our our Lama used to visit woke house every saturday we would do a meditation group in san antonio called woke house and we would do it in person and then COVID hit and then we do it on zoom and then back in person and then COVID, would, and then back on zoom and so for over two years now we've been meeting on saturday either in person or on zoom or both and it, every saturday has been a little bit different and so it's just a bunch of people getting together and talking about Buddhist themes. And I just recently started using the White TDR Zoom channel. And so I want to respect uh, the White TDR people and Rinpoche and all the Rinpoche students around the world. So I'm going to hold space every Saturday. Here in Texas, it's 10 a.m. Or it's almost it's going to be 11 a.m. right now. Uh, but every Saturday at 10 a.m. Central Time. I'm just gonna hold space for an hour. Jerry popped in and Jerry wanted to give us feedback on his trip to India and our Lama's cremation ceremony. Uh, any of Rinpoche's students can jump on and, and just have this hour to talk about whatever they want to. And if it's just people from uh, the Woke House folks from San Antonio, 
uh, we'll do the normal wolf cow stuff. So every every Saturday will be different. It'll just be an open space to do whatever we want to. Uh, so with, when saying that, I'm going to go ahead and close in our traditional, the wolf cow's traditional prayers. Contemplation of the ten perfecting qualities. May I be generous and helpful. May I be pure, virtuous, and well-disciplined. May I not be selfish. May I be strenuous, energetic, and persevering. May I be patient. May I be able to bear and forbear the wrongs of others. May I be honest and truthful. May I be firm and resolute. May I be kind, compassionate, and friendly. May I be humble, calm, quiet, unruffled, and serene. It's, it's so funny, um, you know, I went to Austin last night with a friend of mine and we were talking about spiritual things the whole time. And we are talking about God and consciousness and Buddha and, and bodhicitta and peace and loving kindness and forgiveness. And every couple of minutes in traffic, my buddy would honk the horn and like throw up his hands like, hey, you, you idiot, get out of my way, you know, or... You idiot, what are you doing, you know? And then we go back to talking about spiritual things, you know? And that's just so human, you know? Uh, I, I saw myself in that, um, in that for sure. You know, you're sitting there talking about Buddha and, and, and prayer and meditation and all these things and then turn around two seconds later and you're like, look at, look at that idiot driver or look at how this person is is ruining my life by not going over the speed limit or whatever. So I thought that was pretty hilarious. <phone rings> Discourse on loving kindness, just as a mother would protect her only child, even at her own life's risk. So let everyone cultivate a boundless heart towards all beings. Let our hearts of boundless love pervade the whole world so that all beings without exception might be happy. Closing dedication of merit. If I have attained any merit by the result of this practice, may be accredited to all beings everywhere. May they find the source of suffering and extinguish it. May they find the source of happiness and increase it. May all beings dwell in ultimate, unalloyed nibbana. And we're going to bow to the shrine three times. And we're going to bow to our Sangha brothers and sisters with smiles of gratitude. When we say we bow to our Sangha, Sangha is community. Everybody needs a community, whether it's a church or a civic group or a, a non-profit or a place you volunteer or a close bunch of friends or maybe family. Everyone needs a support group. Everybody needs to belong to something. We are a pack animal. We are a social animal. We know that isolation, in prison, you put people in isolation because it's the worst thing that you can do to a human being. Um, and so there's a lot of people through COVID that are very isolated, even before COVID. It's really important that you have to find a place to belong, whether it's a meditation group, um, a church, uh, you know, AA, uh, whatever, you know, some kind of self-help or support group, something at least once a week to go be around other people, even if it's just on Zoom. And so I'm going to, we're going to continue this Woke House tradition of meeting on Saturdays. And if you want this to be your community then you're more than welcome to pop in uh, we're not the subject matter experts on anything we only believe in community and being together and talking about loving kindness compassion generosity and making this a better world by using buddhist principles uh, but i'll never forget rinpoche would pop into the zooms and he would say Never think that your Lama is not watching or not paying attention to Woke House or your meditation group. Never, never think that, he said. With pure intentions, only try to help other people. I've, I actually wrote down that quote 
from Rinpoche because um, any small thing you can do to benefit others or make this world just a little better uh, has a ripple effect throughout the world. Just like occasionally there's something very terrible that happens and we hear about it on the news. What they don't show is every single day all over the place there are random acts of kindness happening. And that's what keeps the world afloat. And that's what keeps the world going. And I, I, I personally believe things are actually getting better and not worse. Uh, we're in a dark time now, but uh, things always turn around. So, anyway. <sighs> Enjoy your weekend. See you next Saturday. Peace.